I'm, uh, to brag, I uh, was a public policy uh, my master's in it, and I don't care about the news anymore. Your master's was in public, public policy? policy? Mm-hmm. You're like, a, a, a wonk. Policy wonk. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> policy wonk? I've never heard that before. <laughs> they call them wonks? <laughs> I don't that want to be a wonk. <laughs> I don't know. I've just heard it. Before. You've heard Where'd policy you heard wonk? <laughs> just because they're just like, is that just mean like nerd for policy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Wonk is so much more brutal than, yeah. than dork. Yeah. yeah. Wonk, well, wonk makes it seem like you do some weird shit in your private time. Wonk also, for some reason, reminds me of like wasp. So just wasp. Yeah. 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 Well, no, you're not a wasp. I, I, would, I would not <laughs> call yeah. you a wasp. White <laughs> <laughs> I come on here with like white face and I'm like, well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're the opposite of a wasp. <laughs> you're like a hmm. Almost said, almost said the word, Trent. Oh, like I said before, I publicly agree with everything. <laughs> everything we've ever said on the, on this podcast. I am so scared. <laughs> um, have you ever dated a wasp, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant? What is that? Um, it's like think like a Connecticut, like rich white. Like, or maybe it's not even rich. <laughs> yeah, I would say they're rich. I'd say they're rich. Yeah. Yeah. Wasp is like the people in Wedding Crashers whose wedding they went to. Oh, no. I think that's like too. Yeah. I don't think I've ever dated someone rich. Rich. Yeah. Like, the last guy was like from the but Midwest. You've, you've famously not- dated a lot of white guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of you love white guys, white rappers. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I don't anymore. Um, I've changed that. Yeah. I. On uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, you've done a lot of personal growth in the last year. I really have. It's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, I have to like now actually just get married to a brown guy by the end of this year. It'll happen really yeah. quick. Yeah. When I met you, you were dating white rappers. You were, who were alcoholics. Who were alcoholics? Who d- did not like me at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not like you. Who did not give a fuck about me? And yeah. I was like, love me. And oh, yeah. now I'm like, well, they thought your name was Aisha. They probably did. And yeah. I was like, what do you want it to be? <laughs> <laughs> And then I had to stop drinking <laughs> and right. get my life back together. The and now I, I think now it'd be everything's cool. good. Everything's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything's mm-hmm. great and golden. Everything's wonderful. But I think I would like to maybe date a rich, rich guy. Not even. Yeah, one. I think you're ready for a rich guy. Yeah, you're ready for a rich yeah. guy. It's time. It's time. It's time. <laughs> it's time for all of us to, um, you know. Wouldn't it be great to date rich? I dated. Did you? A- an Indian girl. <laughs> Why are bra- you bringing that up? <laughs> not to rag. Well, uh, yeah. for every for every brown woman who's dating only white guys, is a, yeah. is a white guy who's dating only brown women. You really do. It's kind of wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about our people? Fever. But anyway, I dated this Indian girl. Yeah. Speaking of rich, her, her, she was from Qatar. Oh. And crazy rich Asians. Crazy rich. South Asians. South Asians. Middle East. Crazy rich South nope, Asians. You're, where does Asia it, become the Middle East? It doesn't. What, I mean, but where's the line? Well, well let's look at the <laughs> map. Let's look at the map. <laughs> <laughs> well, right here. We, bought a, we, we, South we bought a map of the only part of the world we care about. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I if I may, <clears throat> this is South Asia, right? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then this would be like the Middle East where Chicago okay, is. Okay, cool. And Detroit. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. But in the U- the U.S., that would be considered the Midwest. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Mm. See what I did there. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, I was da- <laughs> I was dating this Indian girl. She was from Qatar. Everyone told me she was incredibly rich. Her family would. Is that why you were rich. dating her? No, no. I didn't even think. I don't think like that. <laughs> 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 So sorry. <laughs> you know, maybe this is a little unconventional in today's modern uh, society, but Trent dates for love. Yeah, I Aww. date for love. Call him old fashioned. Well, uh, I do too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it didn't work out. Yeah. But she probably was rich. She lived in in Midtown by herself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's wild. She has. Who wants to live in Midtown? Yeah. She had a beautiful view of. The uh, Twin entire Towers. state building, <laughs> yeah. of, of Times what Square. used to be, what used to be <laughs> before, <laughs> before her Indian country <laughs> knocked down those beautiful towers. And never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he hiding out in Pakistan? Yeah, With- and. <laughs> Uh, what? Oh, uh, was I supposed to do that? In? Find no, him? I just thought it's yeah. It's do you guys strange. like have a different view on me because? 
Well, I mean, I, I would have told somebody, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is cool of the country to be like, all right, just you can lie low here, but just like be fucking chill. Okay? What's, yeah. I will say this about the white guys I've dated. Every time they are like, oh, Pakistani, and they're like, they start to like learn about Pakistan and like the language and like cultural things. They always bring up Osama bin Laden being there, <laughs> and I'm always like, oh, really? I don't, do you have like something against me? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, it gets really weird where they're like. And Bin Laden was hiding out. And I was like, oh, no, you don't like me right now. <laughs> what a compound. Do, do, do all the buildings look like that compound out there? <laughs> I don't even know what the compound looked like. You don't know Why the Islamabad you... compound? Islamabad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Islamabad. The Islamabad compound? <laughs> the Islamabad now, camp. Tell me this. Yeah. How often, I mean, you've been to Pakistan, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How often do you go? Or when's the last time you went? The last time I went, I was like 17. So that was 10 years ago. Are you ready to go again? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is what you need to. Do. Maybe this is the soul searching you need to do is to go to Pakistan actually, and find yourself. Pakistan. I actually, my plan was to go in December because I didn't want to go yeah. and like just like see my family and stuff. Mm -hmm. But everything's really bad politically there, so I'm not. Oh really? Go. Oh, what's why? <laughs> we don't need to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you see, America right now yeah. is funding a different government. <laughs> and there's a lot of there's well, a lot of Well, thanks for coming on. <laughs> Telling me a second a second world country is politically unstable. <laughs> yeah, strange. Well, uh, very good to have you here. Thank yeah, you. Joe, you should we introduce? I, I believe we should introduce our, <laughs> our guests. Well, let's introduce the podcast, and then we'll introduce. Oh, the guests. sure, sure. I'll introduce the podcast. You introduce the podcast. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the Echo Chamber podcast, the only podcast where two, sometimes three, comedians read the Wall Street Journal because, because one, of one of us gets, gets it, it for free, free from, from work. work. We don't know. We'll, we'll never, never say it. To okay. Today, we're joined by a very special guest, a very dear friend of Trent and mine. <laughs> I just tried. <laughs> yeah. A mama Sarda. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. I will add some brown context. <laughs> That's right. We were saying earlier, uh, before this probably started rolling, that we really needed a brown slash woman guest yes. to balance yes. out the viewership. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And so I thanks. was saying that I think all of your opinions are always correct. This is like <laughs> this, this is like Biden ha having like Kamala as his running mate to level the ticket. That's uh, what we're doing. Yes, that's actually spot on. That's what we're doing. I like that you guys cut. Do you guys have a sister? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we have sisters. <laughs> yeah, we we cut them out. <laughs> It's kind of wild. <laughs> yeah, it is wild. Yeah. It is really stupid. <laughs> the thing is he, I like it. I like it too. Well, he gets the physical. I mean, one well, of us gets the physical. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Mark. You heard it's, it here uh, first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna give uh, everybody a rundown. Uh, on, on the stories that we're going to be hearing about today. So we're going to read a few stories. First, speaking of Pakistan, speaking of uh, oh, maybe its neighbor, India, yes. poll workers are going to great lengths to install voting machines in India. And boy, is that a huge pain in the ass every time they have an election. Really? Yeah, so we'll get into that. Wow. We'll hear a little bit hmm. about uh, what well, it takes to do that. We'll also be talking about Colorado. Apparently, a bunch of funeral homes got in trouble for it. Uh, not <laughs> disposing of bodies correctly. <laughs> what? So they, they're, oh, making, they're making new new laws. Well, you know who else is in trouble? Open AI. Because mm. mm, boy, did they take Scarlett Johansson's voice and I heard it, about that. Yeah, and she did not sign off on it. And they said, "Oh no, no, no we didn't do that." Well, AI, AI wouldn't do anything wrong. <laughs> AI wouldn't do anything wrong. We'll read all about that. Uh, well, also be like Bumble under fire for a new ad. They, oh, I heard about that too. I Bumble under fire. Oh, I didn't hear about that. I'm excited for that one. And uh, one of our favorite senators, uh, Mr. John Fetterman. Pennsylvania. Oh yes. <laughs> We're gonna get an update from the big man. The oh. big man. Do you have another stroke? Oh, <laughs> now we're mostly going to hear about how he can't put his pants on. Nice. Um, Fetterman finds his own voice, goes his own way. Aww. He's, a, he's a maverick, and yeah. I love him for it. That's great. Uh, oh, he yeah, he's a great guy. Pretty, pretty wild opinions about Israel. Uh, wow. Right, so we'll find that. Well, Shoot. in our final story, we'll be covering and taking a look at the summer box office. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't wait to hear more about the summer box office. <laughs> but first... <laughs> Who will be the next Barbenheimer? <laughs> Only time will tell. But first, we are going to venture far to the mystical land called the Orient. Where we oh, look oh, God! God, I just... I, I still like whatever you, you guys said. You said that you agree. 
Uh, you can't take it back now. <laughs> and then the land of India, where poll workers go to great lengths, the race to reach voters in world's largest election. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I heard uh, someone here gets it for free. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who. Yeah, one of us. Yeah. And I'm going to need you to help me pronounce a lot of the names and places. <laughs> this is, I wish you told <laughs> me in advance. This is why I picked this one. <laughs> so we're going to see if you can okay. actually... Um, Okay, what's that? Pl- Ajad Island. Ajad? Good job, yes. Okay, Ajad Island, India. The hovercraft cut across hovercraft cut across the water and slid onto the sandy beach of a nearly deserted island. Vijay got- Nandinya. Yeah, yeah. Vijay Nandinya <laughs> and nine other election workers. I was a teacher. I clambered <laughs> off the craft toting electronic voting machines. They took a mile long hike across sandy terrain. Uh, hiding scorpions and venomous snakes Jeez. Mm. clutching the voting machines in their arms like newborns they waded one stream and tiptoed across another on a bridge of grain bags and wooden sticks I can't believe these people live like this <laughs> when, <laughs> when oh God, no one told me that this is what you guys talked about also, why are you... I didn't know that you guys read the whole we thing. We don't read the whole we thing. We, we read parts oh, again. We read okay. parts again. And that why are you struggling sense. reading? <laughs> a, we were doing every podcast, and it is pretty hard to read. <laughs> when they reached the island Seoul Village, the men, drenched in sweat, flopped down on the mud floor of a stone hut. No, no one said democracy. It was easy. Wow. Wow. Nobody's ever said that. No one's ever said that. Quote, I didn't imagine I had to walk this much, says Nandinya, a 32-year-old high school math teacher. That's my age. And a first-time poll worker. Hmm. India, the world's most populous country, is holding the world's oh. biggest national election. Hmm. Sure. And we heard about this earlier on another episode. The current president who's running for re-election has giant cardboard cuts oh, yeah. of his face all over cool. India. Um, interesting marketing uh, tactic. The challenge is twofold. There are 5.5 million voting machines for nearly a billion voters. And by Jeez. law... <laughs> yeah. By law, each voter in a still largely rural country must have a polling station within two kilometers, or about 1.2 miles, of a home. That means millions of teachers, civil servants, and, and village council members have been enlisted as election workers and dispatched across India to deliver voting machines for polling dates that run from April to June. Their destinations span the country from tiny islands to the Indian Ocean to villages perched High in the Himalayas. <laughs> oh, the Himalayas. So these guys are lugging around voting machines That's through like, the desert that is really to wild. islands. It's like a nightmare. The other wild thing is that when people read, I lose focus. <laughs> yeah. Dayton, <laughs> Dayton, Dayton, sl- Dayton slid was, out of his chair. No, no this like, one, I was losing focus. Too. Yeah, it's a were, lot to take in. A, it was a lot to take in. Yeah. yeah, well, it was a very like prosy first couple paragraphs. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who, who wrote this article? I'll cut, through, okay. I'll cut to the gist of it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you really you highlight a lot of paragraphs here. Yeah, it's I don't know how interesting it is, but basically they're losing faith. Oh, I'm losing faith. You guys said you spaced out, and thought about anything. I else. mean, if you I thought it was this in, back, I, thought it was I was thinking about it's, something completely different. So basically, they're they're carrying these voting machines through can mountainous I see a, can I see desert regions, yeah, walking it's over like, scorpions, walking over scorpions. It's like playing Zelda. It's like yeah. if you had to mm, carry yeah. a voting machine across the the crazy landscape. Well, is nightmare. that the only way that the, people can vote? I mean, what do you mean? I mean, like, what was the old tactic, does it say? I think they just do this every... Oh, damn. You know, well, <laughs> how long have they had elections? I don't know. That's kind of why Am we I had on? you on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, They definitely didn't have them like 100 years ago, right? I don't know. Well, they used to yeah, be under British know. colonial rule. That sure. was 1940, until 1947. But they didn't oh. vote for a goddamn thing back then. No, wow. they did not. That was until 1947. So maybe yeah. after that, have they been a democracy? Or did they have like a king or some shit? I, probably have a king in the 40s. Uh, uh, this is really embarrassing. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know. You I don't know. know. I mean, but like, the good news about these election machines, if they, if they uh, malfunction, they don't have to call long distance. That's true. Because... Mm. The Indian people can. The, the <laughs> <laughs> they can walk them yeah, through. That's, that's true. That's that's really true. Help yeah, yes, they can. Yeah. Well, this is the only other part I'm going to read because it made me laugh. Um, <laughs> w- w- one one election volunteer who has uh, made tea on a propane stove and assigned yeah. some of the other volunteers to chop onions and tomatoes for a nice rice dish. This is after they like hiked a thousand miles through like snakes and scorpions and shit. That night, he made crab stew from a villager's fresh catch. His cooking skills were honed in college, working part-time at Pizza Hut. 
Oh, Whoa. hell yeah. I, okay, Pizza Hut and McDonald's in other countries is the best. Yeah. It's also great here. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, it's also great here. I bet it's awesome no. there. <laughs> Joe is right. It's great here, but it's not great in New York City. No, no it's not. No, it's but, not. Now, I was in Minneapolis last yeah. weekend, oh. and we I was staying in an Airbnb, mm-hmm. and they had a Domino's pizza right next to our Airbnb. Ooh. And... I got drunk and ordered it two nights in a row. Of course. And it fucking rocked. Wow. Did you get any of the, the, the desserts? No. Or just but, a pizza? Well, but get this, though. Yeah. The deals are... I, I ordered... I said, I'll have a medium pepperoni pizza. And the guy said, you'll save $2 by upgrading to a large. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, what are, what okay. are the economics of that? <laughs> and then I, when we called the next night... Yeah. First of all, he's like, is this Joe? And I was like, ah, I don't love that. Oh, mm, wow. Yeah. And then I go, I'll get another large pepperoni. And he goes, you unlocked seven seven dollars off wow you unlocked <laughs> oh wow that you he was like is this joe you're the only other guy he's yeah. that's why it was so good because they're like we've never made pizza back to back so anyway long story short it's really hard to do an election in india yeah <laughs> sure yeah. sure and i'm so glad that i got to be an expert on this subject <laughs> yeah, yeah. You really i knew so me. much yeah, yeah i really it. did yeah. well yeah. it's also hard apparently to run a funeral home oh no, in, no in colorado this is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh, okay. okay. Wall Street Never Journal. heard Dateline, of it. <laughs> Dateline, Colorado. Dateline, Colorado. <laughs> Grizzly discoveries spur funeral laws. Colorado Governor Jared Polis signed two bills into law Friday that overall state oversight of the funeral home industry after gruesome discoveries. Ooh, oh, my God. Oh my God. Tell me more. Including 190 discomposing bodies. <laughs> What? Well, isn't that what happens when you bury people? They start to decompose. Well, but weren't they in they, coffins? They're, they're not buried yet. They're yeah. in the, just in the back of the funeral home. Well, they're oh, wow. in the back. Wow. But aren't they queued up? They're in the queue. But why is there so many? Also, for the listeners, Colorado <laughs> is here. It's right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, they, also wrote, they also wrote discomposing instead of decomposing. Can I see? Yeah. Discomposing might be a different word. Well, I, I looked it up. Hmm. And it's, I think it's wrong. I think we found a, a Wall Street whoopsie. Should we write in? <laughs> Whoa, some <laughs> <laughs> families. We should, we they should, should call, be decomposed. We should call Sorry, in. You guys are such slow readers. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> um, wait, some families had spread ashes that turned out to be fake? Yeah. That's crazy. So they Wait, were just what? lying. And they were selling. Oh, so they weren't cremating they people and they're no. just handing them fake ashes? <laughs> yeah. Wait. I feel so much better about accidentally losing my grandma's ashes. You lost what? your grandma. <laughs> 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 I thought that I did actually though for a year, but then I found them. You missed Where were they? They're, they're in, the in uh, uh, this desk that I gave to my brother. He still has. Okay. They're in the Is desk. grandma still uh, in? Still in the family. Yeah. 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 Is grandma still in the She's still in the desk. That's yeah. good. good. <laughs> <laughs> they were also selling. The unauthorized sale of body parts. Wait, this is great. This is <laughs> where, where in Colorado is this? It doesn't I, I, say. I'm actually going to be there in July, and I might need to pick a few. <laughs> it doesn't say, but uh, the case is put Colorado's lax funeral home regulations. Lax funeral home regulations. Some of the weakest in the U.S. Wow. What's that mean, though? They're in the just spotlight. Like, do what you want, guys. With I the guess bodies. nobody checks in really to see. Mm-hmm. No. And it rocked hundreds of already grieving families. Some families had ceremonially spread ashes that turned out to be fake. I just read that. Others <laughs> said they had nightmares about what their loved ones might have looked like in a decayed state. <gasps> Not oh. nightmares. <laughs> I think here's here's an unpopular opinion. Uh-huh. Once you're dead, you're dead. Yeah. Yeah, but also, <laughs> who wants to go to Acadia yeah. National Park to spread uh, a bag of flour around? That's true. It's the thought, I think. Yeah. I don't... Th- I think I once, d- once you've been you know bagged up that's it i don't know i don't know but but also here's my real question yeah isn't it isn't it just easier for them to like incinerate these bodies than pile them up in the back well, i think well, they're, they're selling yeah they're thing. selling yeah, them. what why. are they selling like what parts of them we don't know. penis <laughs> the, the pe- can i say that penis. yeah yeah we got a great selection of cocks <laughs> <laughs> down here at michael's crematorium <laughs> <laughs> we got black brown that's it <laughs> mostly, mostly black and brown. We're it's Colorado, so it's all white, actually, probably. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of white people there. A lot I of, was there a few weeks ago. There's a lot of white people. Really? Yeah. yeah. You probably had a field day. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I don't get the idea of sp- spreading the ashes. <laughs> I just want to say that, you know, white people are great. <laughs> you guys. I don't know about... 
Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of spreading the ashes. I, I don't want to get going to the ground in a kind of no. Oh, I don't that do I. I'd like to be on, uh, on a mantle. I don't want to be in the mantle. You don't want to be. I, I want to go back into the earth, earth and yeah. get back into the mm. whole the, the cycle. cycle. Yep. Because now it's like. I'm stuck there for a trillion years. It's going to take until that. <laughs> and you're stuck also, in a what if you're in a coffin and you wake away. up? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. What? What if you're in a coffin and you wake up? It's a big fear of mine. And then yeah, you're that, not. You'd be off. Very I know. Alive. Don't. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I think one in you ten. You said it with such that conviction. I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> one, one in ten. <laughs> one in <laughs> you're in ten. there waking up. <laughs> guys. Guys. <laughs> Guys, well, in, in guys, Colorado, please. it might happen. It might happen a lot with these funeral homes. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. One, uh, they there's just some new laws. One requires regulators to routinely inspect funeral homes and give them more enforcement power. Another implements licensing for funeral directors and other workers. They would need to pass a background check mm. and a national exam while possessing degrees and work experience. Previously, funeral home directors in Colorado didn't have to graduate from high school, let alone have a degree. <laughs> oh, but they don't, they don't, they're just, they think that's a problem and not that, like, they're just selling bo- Like, does anyone get arrested for this? Like, this is kind of... Yeah, just because you have, have a, a, a high school degree doesn't mean you're not going to sell body parts. <laughs> the guy who, I mean, they're, they're not all bright. The guy who was working at the funeral home or whatever when my dad passed away yeah. and we were like selecting the lot or whatever because my grandma had purchased all of these lots already sure and he's on this computer and he's looking through like he was like oh and uh and it was robert that passed away and we were like well that's our uncle so no <laughs> <laughs> and he was like okay i have it in this lot over here and we're like that's not the lot oh, God. yeah so they're not the brightest yeah yeah how they many? also just don't give a fuck because it's so not. So my dad could be anywhere. <laughs> it could oh, be God. anywhere. Whatever yeah. they gave us was for your sure grandma, not as accurate. Your dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A family that's just lost. Yeah, your dad relatives are all over the place. Yeah, I know. We had his ashes buried because we were like, "What? Oh, we're gonna want to lose the ashes." Mm. Yeah. So where'd you you bury them in the in the uh, in the whole ground? N- yeah. Of course. Who knows? In the what cemetery. Who knows what they did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is still- that cheaper than a big box? It's cheaper, in theory, but mm. it still adds up because we thought you just get an urn, but then you got to put a box. You got to put the urn in a box. <laughs> and now I'm buying a, an urn and a casket. <laughs> Wait, so that's kind of wild. Why yeah. can't you just like dig a hole? That's what I was saying. Yeah, I yeah. think if I was a funeral director, I'd be like, everyone dig a hole. You f- whatever hole you find first, you dig, and then you just put like a little a little thing on it, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's no. We know. should go back to that. We should. So, wow, there's 120 dead bodies in the back of that place. But if you yeah. need a penis, <laughs> you know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fascinating story. You know who else is in trouble, like we mentioned? Open AI. Oh, oh, no. Because they are in a battle with Scarlett Johansson. Oh, my god. One of the gosh. most beautiful angels in the world. <laughs> with a hot-ass voice. Dispute shows ongoing collision between AI and Hollywood. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Mm, okay, wow. <laughs> Altman's artificial intelligence powerhouse, OpenAI. I'm going to read it like this so you stay interested. Okay. <laughs> Had for months unsuccessfully courted Johansson, who memorably voiced the AI assistant in the 2013 film Her. That movie, mm. I hated that movie. I hated it too. Well, Altman didn't, he liked it a lot. Last September, <laughs> Johansson turned down an offer to work with OpenAI and voice a new assistant feature. Altman didn't give up. In mid-May, he texted Lord, co-chairman of Creative Artist Agency, asking if Johansson might reconsider. Mm. He wanted mm. to show the actress something he'd been working on. Oh, boy. There's a picture of his cock. Uh, uh. <laughs> people familiar with the interaction said, the camps couldn't settle on a time to meet up. Then on May 13th, OpenAI showcased an uh, updated AI system equipped with a new voice assistant for its chat GPT tool, including a female named Sky. Shut up. <laughs> Johansson was surprised and angry. Johansson. She and Johansson. Did. Johansson. It spelled like that. It's Johansson. Oh, it's Scarlett Johansson. Well, she made me nervous. She laughed at the thing I said before. And now I'm... And now, now Are it's you reading slow. that? Or is that just what yeah. She and... <laughs> Johansson was surprised and angry. Why are you guys just better at reading? Let me finish the <laughs> fucking <Sorry>. sentence. <laughs> <laughs> The 
Did Sky's voice sounded eerily similar to hers? Ah. Mm. Lord and the actress spent the morning fielding calls and emails. When Lord confronted Altman, however, the OpenAI chief executive was incredulous. Did they really think the voice sounded like Johansson? Was she mad? <laughs> was I she like, mad? I Are like you the mad? way that you did the incred- incredulous. Oh, incredulous. Yeah. That's I great. can read. Good word. Big word. <laughs> it is, yeah. The it's Wall Street Journal. <laughs> big word. Very good, Joe. Well, Trent and Amama, for performers like Johansson and IP owners, mm, it is yes. hard to prove whether their likeness or content has been misused. Sure. And regulations governing the system are scant. Mm. In the absence of clear rules, OpenAI has said it's speaking directly to content creators, including studios and artists, about the potential disruption of AI. Bullshit. No, <laughs> they're not speaking not. with yeah, yeah, they're not. They're don't, not. don't worry. We've got it coming. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to give don't, you, you don't a billion dollars. dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've been talking to a lot of creators. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking absolute horseshit. And you know that some creators are like, no, that's actually my voice. I gave it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so they... they Asked her and begged her for like months to do this. Yeah, they pleaded. And then, and then, they just, like, and then he's going, "Whoa, it sounds like Scarlett Johansson." I you know, I wouldn't go that, that far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard that Vanilla Ice interview where he's like talking about his song and then Queen's song, and he's yes. like, "No, no, but mine is." Yeah, he's like, "Dun dun 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 dun." The exact same thing that just dun, happened. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "I mean, it literally doesn't even." <laughs> you guys are crazy. You don't have to read the rest. <laughs> <laughs> next <laughs> mama's over here like next all right no, well, let's let hope, me read let's hope let's this let one all right everyone let, give, let, her, let her read the bumble article yeah this is about bumble bumble yeah, removes anti- you set, it up. Yeah, about. set it up set it up set it up <laughs> set it up right <laughs> Uh, it's not so easy, huh? Yeah, not so easy. <laughs> it is. I'm it's a mama. Actually, I know what to read. <laughs> it's actually really easy. So, Bumble. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh, oh yeah. Wall Street Journal. <laughs> okay. Interesting. And I don't know if you guys know. Do you guys know what Bumble is? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the uh, app design. It's the app where I never get laid. Be deleted. Yes. And actually, same. Um, <laughs> it works for no one. <laughs> it works for no one. That doesn't work. But Bumble had anti-celibacy ads, and they removed them, according to this headline. Oh. So dating at Bumble said Monday it would remove a series of advertisements in which it said, don't fucking, <laughs> fucking <laughs> snooze fast. And it Spice would, it up a little. In which it said celibacy wasn't the answer. <laughs> <laughs> in response to criticism that the ads undermine daters freedom of choice sounds like a lot of people um got mad over some bullshit because they might want to get laid so they said so, so the whole ad is saying celibacy <laughs> celibacy is celibacy. Celibacy. <laughs> good thing i didn't read this one <laughs> celibacy is not the answer this is a direct yeah, quote it basically said the ad, the celibacy isn't the answer and there were a bunch of ads up. they'll let to an insult i guess it's not the answer friend. <laughs> that's yeah that's but he, it's involuntary. Do but they address the lot, involuntary? They don't, they don't get into involuntary syllabus. They should pivot to, towards incels. But yeah, the, a vow of celibacy <laughs> is not the answer, and thou shalt not give up on dating and become a nun. Yeah, that, that was, was another one of their ads. Yeah. And uh, people were upset about it. I think a lot of those people just also were probably celibate and haven't gotten laid. And were like, also, are they really trying to crack open the nun market? <laughs> yeah. That's, I think they're holding. I've been on Bumble. It is a bunch of nuns. It sucks. It's, Bumble it sucks. sucks. Well, women so I message prefer. first. They, and they, how do you guys feel about that? In theory, they do. Or you just match them and you never hear anything. Yeah, you, I never heard anything. I never heard shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never heard what, fucking what's your, Mama, what's your opening line on Bumble? I'm not on Bumble. What, you, what, what would be your opening you? line <laughs> on a dating app? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would be like, hey, tell me a secret about one of your friends and I promise that if I meet them I will never share that secret and then people usually would be like oh okay not you would message a guy tell me a secret about one of your and friends and respond. if I ever meet them yeah. I promise I won't tell that secret <laughs> and I got so many people that's really? pretty good that's a good problem yeah. I would never think of something mine is always like do you want to drink alcohol fuck no. I think it, it's, it, sound, it also sounds different coming from a guy when you say hey tell me a, tell me a secret <laughs> <laughs> And I, yeah, about, and I'll never tell your friends. I'll never tell your friends. In fact, you'll never even see your friends again. <laughs> How do you like that, honey? But it works all the time, and guys are always like, "Oh my god!" And then mm. they'll tell me things. You're about to have a lot of secrets. Yeah, they do. Wow. Well, Bumble was founded in 2014 by a then 24 year old Whitney Wolf Hurd. Oh, bitch. It was. <laughs> oh no 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 no. no. <laughs> 
<laughs> After this, we are going to do a woman's studies course. <laughs> Just calling and her a bitch for no reason. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ru- ruined fucking dating apps for everybody. <laughs> it was long known uh, for only allowing women to send the first message to potential heterosexual partners, though the redesign did away with that feature. The heterosexual part? So the the heterosexual part? part or the, <laughs> yeah. or the women first part? Yeah. I think the women first part. <laughs> They're like, no, it's still they- heterosexual. For sure. <laughs> no games. <laughs> no games. The company has faced some turnover in recent year in recent Say months. Again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're off our game today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, we, well, we have a woman in the <laughs> yeah. lady on so the show. Can't do a single fucking thing right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> The company has faced some turnover <laughs> in recent months. Wolf Heard said she would step down last year. In February, Bumble said it would lay off approximately 350 people. Whoa. Like several other dating apps, Bumble has introduced new premium features and price tiers in recent years to what attract well, to attract a newer generation of users. Yeah, that's that's why. <laughs> to attract, you pay for yeah. this. Yeah. We're trying to attract yeah. you to pay for this. Yeah, we don't want to make more money. Yeah. We just want to get to a new... In the company's quarterly report released last week, it said it had more than 2.7 million paying users, up from 2.4 million a Ooh. year ago. So it's working. Seems to be working. It's working. So keep saying down with celibacy, down with nuts. No. <laughs> yeah. Stupid fucking prudes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking prudes. <laughs> it's sick of these prude ass nuns. <laughs> yeah, I wish that nuns were sluttier. <laughs> they are they do be kind of being slutty though. They do be kind of being slutty. <laughs> Joe went to the nuns. Yeah, they Joe's do be Catholic. Kind of being I yeah, I was raised Catholic, so I mean a nun we're still practicing. Like yeah. a nun fantasy. <laughs> oh, I see. Would There's really a giant it cross <laughs> yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of a man with the fear of God in his heart, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, John Fetterman. Finds his voice, goes his own way. <laughs> this is from the Wall Street Journal. Daylight, Washington. More than a year after his discharge from the hospital for a serious depression that followed a stroke during his Senate campaign, sure. Senator John Fetterman, Democrat from Pennsylvania, knows a few things for certain. One, he is lucky to be alive. Ah, uh, yes. He, his, oh, sorry, his support for Israel is unshakable. Oh, <laughs> Is that what the next is? Yeah. <laughs> wow. He backs President Biden. He's sticking to the hoodies. And the he what? The hoodies. The hoodies he wears. Oh, he wears okay. dress up. He doesn't, he I, thought, I thought it was like a clan reference. <laughs> no, yeah. He's sticking to the hoodies. <laughs> yeah, no. He was too depressed to put on a suit and go to Capitol Hill. So mm, he wore gym shorts and hoodies. Okay. And still does. <laughs> and it's kind of a wild look. Uh, he has no plans to change his party affiliation, even as many Democrats purse their lips hmm. when the freshman senator breaks with party line on the most controversial issues of the day. Quote, I might have a different view on things like Israel and some other ones. Fetterman, 54 years old, said wide ranging interview in his office. I just consider myself a Democrat that calls balls and strikes. He said, oh, God. I, don't, I don't know what that balls means. <laughs> While pointing to his solid blue voting record in support for LBGTQ rights mm. and abortion access. Hmm. Known for wearing gym shorts and a sweatshirt to work. Yeah, he, he dresses bu- like an umpire. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fetterman is a complicated figure. Rebounding from a health crisis that put the senator's career in doubt, he is campaigning for Biden in crucial swing states while angering progressives with his stances on Israel and border security. Hmm. His most attention-grabbing stance, he believes that the U.S. should give Israel a free hand to pursue its military plans in Gaza. Anyway, we're going to skip past that part. I just thought you would like this. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Fetterman, guys, has also been trying to work on himself. Oh, oh wow. We have so much in common. <laughs> 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 What's he doing, Joe? Does it say what he's working on? Judy Hines, a supporter of Fetterman, who is the vice chair of the Mercer County Democratic <laughs> Party, recalled being an event outside of Pittsburgh after he was discharged from Walter Reed National M- Military Medical Center. People were shouting, John. John. We love you. <laughs> John, sure, sure. we love you. Yeah. She recalled he said, thank you. But I have to learn how to love myself. Whoa! Wow. So he's gonna have to he move away from white men, and I think you know that is. Look at that king in his office, on his throne. He's a depressed king. A he's depressed, a depressed, yeah, depressed, depressed king. He doesn't love himself. Actually, you could maybe fix him. I would rather window. not. But I am done with him. that. No, I, I <laughs> yeah. refuse to fix anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's not a thing. Fix him. No. <laughs> That he, was 2023, Amama. Why would <laughs> you is... never fuck Senator John Fetterman and fix him? 
<laughs> don't he be like, I love you. I'm so confused right now. We love you, John. <laughs> I can love myself. Do it for the good of the country. <laughs> well, he also, <laughs> in this interview, he defended his wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. Um, quote, it's comfortable, and I don't yeah, have to iron. <laughs> you know, I have chopstick legs, so I can't keep my pants up. Ooh. Mm. So, get a belt. Fetterman also has maintained a friendship with Senator Katie Britt, a fellow freshman Republican Ooh. from Alabama freshman. with young children, oh. freshman, <laughs> who visited him when he was in the hospital. He said he knows well, how, doing it. how difficult you it is so? to be yeah. in the news. You think so? Yeah. And on social media in unfavorable light and have your children begging to stay at home from school. He said he felt for Britt's family when she was criticized for her delivery of the Republican State of the Union. Oh, that was that, uh, that was her. Oh, God. That's his best friend. That woman that lady. is awful. I know. She sucked so that bad. Was, uh, she stunk. Yeah. That was the funniest thing her responding to biden's state oh yeah. that was so can stupid can you do an impression of it no i don't I, it's been so long i know she was yeah. like biden was like crazy <laughs> <laughs> she was like in a kitchen right yeah she was like in a kitchen like making like pancakes yeah. for her like <laughs> tits out she's like yeah. biden's so bad yeah she, biden yeah. just doesn't <laughs> care about like, families get it he just doesn't <laughs> care about families and a lot of the things he said were like <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So they probably are fucking. She seems. Yeah, they're, they're fucking. fucking. Yeah. You hear? You heard it here first. They're fucking. Yeah, and I don't think we can get sued for saying that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Wall Street Journal next week will confirm it. <laughs> well, I believe this is our final story. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, nice to have you too. <laughs> This is from the exchange <laughs> section of the Wall Street Journal. Oh. What that means, I don't really know. Huh. Okay. I haven't heard about uh, There's but, lots of new sections now. Yeah, there is. There's a well, racist ran- section, too. <laughs> there's branching out. Well, oh, Garfield. It's the summer of sequels. Oh. <laughs> what is it? It's been the past summer for, for like 20 years. years yeah. <laughs> well, the Barbenheimer frenzy show that moviegoers are game for something new. So, here's a sequel. The wait, industry wait. got the message. But movie making takes years. Yeah. Hmm. Last summer, Barbie and her high-heeled friend saved Hollywood with a little help from J. Robert Oppenheimer and his atomic bomb. We saw that We movie. saw that together. Yeah, we yeah. saw that together. A little help from J. Robert Oppenheimer. <laughs> the Barbenheimer frenzy pumped nearly $2.5 billion into the pockets of studios and theater owners, giving the industry a reason to feel like the movie business was back. They're back, baby. Mm. In a big way. Despite threats in like the rise. Way. Despite threats like the rise of streaming, the aftermath of COVID-19, and twin strikes that paralyzed the movie business for months. It showed that audiences are hungry for fresh joys and willing to spend their money on creative, risky bets. (laughs) We don't know how to read. If they're done right. (laughs) We've never read before. (laughs) (laughs) So, So what is Hollywood doing this summer? It's releasing a bunch of sequels. <laughs> <laughs> Say that last awesome. one. Again, it's what? It's releasing a okay. bunch of sequels. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> you ba- said that weird. <laughs> so movies take too long to make, so these they made these all like in like t- 2019, and now they're coming out. Mm, yeah. Is that the idea? No, I don't think so. I, I think they made them last year. And now, now they're, they're all gonna, yeah. Well, Bad Boys Ride or Die. Oh God! The fourth <laughs> movie in the Buddy Cop series Jesus comes out in Christ. June. Despicable Me Four is actually the sixth in the Four? franchise, two including the films. two Minions movies. The Rise of Crew. Cool. I guess there are some the people are really crew. into that. Also, the, Bad well, Boys well, Four. They're like eighty years old. <laughs> <laughs> There's a group of people that love the Minions. They're called um, <laughs> all of Latin America <laughs> and Mexico. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh that's my god. True. <laughs> you see pinatas and shape of minions, <laughs> fucking quinceanera dresses everywhere. Cakes. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, people live for the minions. <laughs> do you say this when other white guests are on? <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to do a bit about, it. Oh, a bit about really it, and I, I just, I never quite found its footing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is true, though. Yeah. Uh, Furiosa Mad Max Saga is the fifth in a franchise that began in 1979. Mm. The most anticipated movie of the summer is Deadpool and Wolverine. You love Deadpool. The third Deadpool Do movie I? featuring Ryan Reynolds in the title role. Deadpool. is the t- That's what everybody's looking forward to. <laughs> we want more Deadpool. Yeah. I uh, think if you're really into Deadpool, you, you should, should be put be, on a list. A watch, oh. a watch, a watch list. <laughs> yeah. I did like the first one, and then the, I didn't care for the next one. I fucking... 
So I used to work at Legoland, and we've mentioned this before on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. But we would do like these like themed nights or whatever. We'd have adult night once a month. Ooh. No kids allowed. Sure. We'd have a little bar. Fun. But we that age would have would have a theme, so we'd have like Marvel night once yeah. a year, and we'd hire these costume performers to come in. And there was this Deadpool guy that dressed up like Deadpool, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he was so inspired from the movie that he would like be all like lewd and crass, just like Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool uh. was, oh, to the God. point that he was like like kind of borderline sexually assaulting people sure. that oh my came God. there, and we had to fire him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like at an event. You'd be like, you can't like physically touch oh. the gas. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess he can't be a method actor anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so. See? Well, I'm actually Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool yeah, stinks. Deadpool stinks, and I'm I'm voting for Wolverine. Are they working together? Or are they fighting? Well, I guess we'll, we'll find have out. To go have to find out. Yes, we will have to find out. Maybe yeah. we'll go the way of Kong and Zilla and work together. Ah, <laughs> Team up. Yes. Yes. True. Um. Wait, is this Deadpool v Wolverine or Deadpool I believe X it's Wolverine? Deadpool and ampersand Wolverine. Ah. <laughs> hmm. yeah. That'd be good. Uh, well, Barbara and I must stoke the hopes of theater owners and their boosters across the country. Movie going was an event. People came in costume in large groups. Barbie fans saw Oppenheimer on the same day and vice versa. Just for bragging rights. <laughs> Well, we didn't dress up for Oppenheimer. We should have. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> Top yeah. hat. Bragging height. Bra- we did bragging see a bunch height. of people. Bragging height. <laughs> I can't speak. No. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Barbenheimer. I went to Oppenheimer and Barbie. Quote, we put day. DJs in our lobbies playing the Barbie soundtrack. Instead of a red carpet, there was a pink carpet. We had pink popcorn and drinks topped with cotton candy. Creating <laughs> this fun environment. Kong's <laughs> going a fucking rampage. <laughs> Movies were back. <laughs> that was great. That was everything. It was beautiful. <laughs> we you read that pink. so well. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you did a great you. job. Yeah, you did a really good job. Yeah. The rest you didn't read well, but this is good. Well, um, I found my groove now that we're wrapping. <laughs> now that we're wrapping up, <laughs> yeah. I found. I finally found. I found my groove. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the new fresh movies are what keeps us excited and business excited. You said can say Bob, that again, Trent. Bob Bagby. <laughs> CEO of B and B Theaters. Bullshit job. Which is based in Kansas City. Oh, I've never heard of the theaters. Hmm. You don't know Bob Bagby. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like I the name like of every man in Kansas, Kansas City. Is City named knows Bob each Bagby. other. <laughs> so he he likes new fresh movies. Quote: If we fall short this summer, we're going to make it up in the fall and in the fourth quarter. Bagby said his best hopes for the fall: more sequels, <laughs> Beetlejuice, oh, God. Beetlejuice, and Joker. Foley. I do. Oh, Joker Fully a Deuce coming out? Yep. Do you really want to watch that? Is that, that? with Joaquin Phoenix or is that Joaquin with that other and Lady Gaga. And Lady Gaga. Oh, Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga. I want to see that new Twister movie. Fully Whoa, Adieu. we can talk about Twister. <laughs> 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 the big league to watch is July 19th when Twisters, the update to the 96 yeah. tornado thriller Twister comes out. Just as Barbie boxes life-size repli- repli- replicas. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's okay. I got it. You do it. Take it over. <laughs> no, no but there's was... new, you know, Barbie, you, the things in the theater, <laughs> yeah. the big Barbie box you can put pose in front of. I, there's yeah, a yeah, picture yeah. of you that yeah, I took. I know, Trent, Trent, I know those. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, apparently, uh, there's ones for Twister. Oh, okay. oh. And they, they blow air at you. Nice. Good. Okay. And uh, one guy. Do you want to go uh, into the boxes? Mama threw the paper away. <laughs> I one, did not. He threw the oh, paper away. One you guy, couldn't say replicas. It's embarrassing. <laughs> one guy said it wasn't the same as being a <laughs> <in our> tornado. <laughs> <laughs> he was disappointed by that. Imagine, <laughs> imagine going into the box and he was like, I just can't believe I spent all this time. <laughs> was there drool coming out of his mouth when he said it? It's not as good as a real it's not like a real tornado. So <laughs> he's holding a massive tub of popcorn. <laughs> he gets in there, he turns it on. He's bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> That'll be me when the Legend of Zelda movie comes out. I'm gonna, throw my, I'm gonna throw my Pepsi at the screen. <laughs> bullshit. Duke and Tree never talked like that. <laughs> he was like eight year olds crying in front of me. You gotta do Which it. movie are you most excited to see this summer? I just yeah. said um, Twisters. Twisters. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Furiosa. Yeah, Mad yeah. Max, Furiosa. Mad Max, uh, Mad Max Saga. Yeah, Furiosa, yes. Mad Max I like saga. the Mad Max movies. I think oh, they, they deserve the sequels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I think they did should focus on those. I did see Furiosa. You motherfucker. 
Mm, I'm sorry. I texted. I saw it before you texted me. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we have this conversation (laughs) on the podcast? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Mama, that has been the Echo Chamber podcast. Uh, Thank you for joining us. That was just so much fun. I want to say that I don't always agree with everything that you said. (laughs) That is important to maybe make that clarification. That's all I want to make it. I think we said some pretty cool stuff, and we covered some really interesting stories. And you guys are such good readers. Some of them were more interesting than the other stories, but generally speaking, I thought there were some pretty good Story. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. So. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. like, I learned also some think, of the best reading Trent and I've done in a while. <laughs> I think many people are saying that. So. <laughs> yeah. it, um, and Mom, is there anything you would like to plug? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's it. That's the show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, yeah, rate, review. All that bullshit. Leave a nice comment. Mm. Uh, tell a friend. <laughs> yeah, tell tell friend. your friends. Uh, that's it. As always, this is Trent Mabry. Signing off. And this is Joe Nunnock signing out. And this is Amama Sardar. Bye. Si- <laughs> signing. Signing off. <laughs> All right. She's signing off. Bye bye. <laughs>